Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti-financial advisor. Guys, welcome for a wonderful show that's for you and that's about you. Those of you who work so freaking hard for your money and you're ready for your money to start working harder for you now. You want that freedom. You want that cash flow. You want that prosperity today, not 30 or 40 million years from now, right? But right now, so you can live that life that you love, doing what you love and doing it with whoever you want. And on top of that, guys, not just are you here for your own financial prosperity, but you're here to make a difference in life. You're here to make a difference in other people's lives. As a rippler, you want to create that ripple effect by blessing more lives as you are blessed too. Guys, thank you so much for allowing me to do that for you. Thank you for allowing me to teach and to guide and to inspire you guys to, do, to live and, and create something greater than the status quo. Here's a reminder, check our website, moneyripples.com. There's great stuff on there. There's you know blogs and videos, and you can even go check out YouTube on our, our Money Ripples with Chris Miles page as well. So subscribe there and check it out. So today, guys, I've got a special guest for you. Um, last week, I kind of teased about him a little bit, um, mentioning that, you know, as, you know, why I'm here, why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? Like, I really had to have kind of my own little come to Jesus talks over the last several months, you know, of what do I really want to do? Because I recognize that as Money Ripples grows and gets bigger, and it's just naturally getting bigger. You guys, I mean, that's all because of you, right? Like, the fact you guys are you know, binging on these episodes, you've been sharing it with other people, you've been having conversations. And, uh, and, and this is even becoming not just nationwide, but even global too. And I realized that, you know, I have a choice, I can either grow, or I can shrink, right, I can either try to go back to what's comfortable, just focusing on what's good for me, or I can really create that ripple effect I keep talking about with you guys. And that ripple effect can go way beyond just a small even audience of what you guys are now. Although there's thousands of you, I know it could be millions of you. And, uh, and I know that I can't do that alone. And that's exactly why I brought on a special guest here. Um, so if you guys went back to the episodes about a year ago, I, did, I launched a financial program for people that were either financial advisors or looking to become more like anti-financial advisors, right? Uh, and that's exactly what I did. And so there was about a dozen people that went through this training program. And one of them that really stood out was my guest here today, which is Craig Feldemeyer here, right? Now, I'll tell you, like, uh, you know, the one thing is I love people that practice what they preach, you know, and Craig's doing that. Like, he's, he's the guy that's getting himself out of the rat race, already doing these investments. He's a sharp guy. Uh, he's been doing this a lot. And I really just want to introduce you guys, really introduce him to the world, you know, if you were to talk about that, like, no pressure, Craig, you know, but, uh, you know, really just to kind of introduce, you know, in, him to you guys. And so, so Craig. Welcome to our show. Yeah, thanks for that intro, Chris. Yeah, you bet. So give give everybody your background. Like, you know, how, what even led you down this path to be where we are today right now? Yeah, sure. So I kind of, uh, we'll start back from the beginning. Um, and I think a lot of people, I think my story will resonate with a lot of people mm-hmm. just in terms of, you know, I was always trying to follow the script um, of what you're supposed to do to become successful, you know, or at least what, you know, your parents teach you, what the media teaches you. Um, and, you know, even going back to my high school days, you know, I was a really good student, um, tried really hard in school, got good grades, mm-hmm. you know, went to a good college. When I was in college, my goal was to get a great job and make a lot of money. Um, so I, you know, I got a job with, uh, you know, a premier investment bank on Wall Street. You know, and then when I started with working with them, I said, you know, man, I've, uh, you know, I've made it. I'm, I'm here. I'm 22 years old, I'm making some, some good money. Um, and then what did I do, which, you know, most first year analysts do or most first year employees, you open up uh, a 401k because that's what you're supposed to do. Right. Right. Um, so I remember, um, you know, the first month of work kind of opening the 401k. And then the first, you know, the first big shock for me was, oh, wow, I can't even really pick what I can invest in. You know, I've got mm. 10 different mutual funds and target date funds um, where I can put my money. Didn't really know too much about the target date fund at the time. This is, you know, 2008, 2009. So I said, okay, you know, I'll put in a certain percentage of my salary into this target date fund and just kind of let it ride. So, you know, over the years, um, my, my job at that investment bank was working with um, ultra high net worth clients. So that typically means in the industry, uh, $5 million uh, liquid net worth and up. So people who have significant amounts of wealth. Yeah. 
And what really kind of the first light bulb moment I had a couple years into the job, I was really starting to dig into, you know, how our clients' portfolios are designed. And I came to realize that, you know, people with that $5 million net worth, they were only able to generate cash flow on those assets about ten dollars to $15,000 a month pre-tax. Wow. Now, it's a pretty good, I would take 10 to 15 grand a month, don't get me wrong. Uh-huh. But it dawned on me and I said, you know, I am nowhere near having a $5 million investment yeah. portfolio. And on top of that, will I ever have a $5 million investment portfolio? I don't know. You know, so then I started tracking my 401k, seeing, you know, how that wasn't growing nearly as much um, as I thought it would be. I started, you know, looking into more of, you know, the expenses of these mutual funds. Mm-hmm. I mean, even with the company match, it wasn't growing, you know, nearly as much um, as I thought. And I really kind of had, you know, a stressful moment thinking, you know, what am I going to do? I'm doing everything right. I did everything, you know, society told me to do, you know, maybe I'll, I'll reach that magic $1 million number, you know, 30 or 40 years from, from when I started working. Mm-hmm. And I took it a step further and I said, okay, say you even get to, say you even get to the million dollar number, you know, the financial pundits say, you know, when you've accumulated assets, what can you withdraw? You know, 4%, even 4% now is I think a little generous. Yeah. I think most financial advisors are saying, you know, kind of the two to 3% range, mm-hmm. but, you know, just for the purpose of this conversation, let's say 4%. I said, if I have a million dollar net worth or a million dollars in my retirement account, and I'm withdrawing 4% a year, I'm only making or only taking $40,000 a year pre-tax. So you still have to pay taxes on that money because of 401k taxes are deferred until you make your withdrawals. Yeah. So that was a very jarring kind of light bulb moment that happened to me. And I said, wow, even working all these years, working super hard, you know, I'm only able to take out $40,000 a year. You know, that's just for me to live at that point. You know, I want to be able to help my family, be able to put my kids through college. You know, how am I going to do this? And so I really kind of went down the path of trying to educate myself. I said, you know, I know there are people who do not struggle in their retirement years. Mm -hmm. Uh, So let me try to do as much research as I can, really kind of find some mentors um, that are out there and see people that I kind of want to emulate my life after. And let me do what they're doing. And through those kind of thoughts um, and conversations, that led me to, you know, introducing myself to you. Um, and similar people who think like us. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of led me to uh, to where I'm at right now. And I've had a huge shift um, in mentality in terms of, um, I'd say the main shift is really going from being an asset gatherer, or accumulating a pile of assets, which really is kind of the scarcity mindset that you know I know you've referred to in the past. It's yeah. kind of accumulating a bunch of assets and then doing everything you can to making sure that, you know, your assets don't go down and just Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, taking a few percent um, off the top every year to live on, as opposed to having a really shift to more of an abundant um, mindset. And that really has to do with buying, investing in cash flow producing assets. Because if you can start building cash flow now, you know, 500 a month, a thousand a month, 2000 a month, you know, Mm -hmm. over time that can really accumulate to 10, 15, $20,000 a month, given, you know, individual circumstances, given how much runway you have. Um, but it's really become a very big passion of mine. And, you know, I'm gonna, you know, try to follow in your footsteps and really try to help people escape the rat race, you know, really help that financial underdog get to financial freedom, take control of their finances and really kind of take control of their life. Yeah. And the cool thing is, you know, you're talking about doing this stuff all without having to build up five or $10 million, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, know, you really can get started. I mean, you can get started really with any amounts. I would say, you know, if you're looking to invest um, in real estate and single family homes, multifamily properties, which is, I know, um, a big part of my uh, investment portfolio, mm-hmm. I'd say at a minimum, you need 15 to 20,000 to get started Yeah. Um, in a good credit score. And, you know, really you can kind of take it from there um, just to kind of get your passive cash flow uh, rolling. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing we always talk about, it's like, you know, you even have a hundred thousand bucks, you know, and that hundred thousand could easily turn into at least 10,000 a year, you know, which for some people, they think that, wait, that, that, that that doesn't seem like it's possible. It's like, actually we're being conservative. We're trying to go on the low end. (laughs) So you don't, we don't overpromise anything, you know, because it depends on where you decide to invest, but it's not that difficult, is it? 
It's really not. And especially too, if anyone's, you know, listening to this um, in 2020, you know, you still have a few months left um, to qualify for those CARES Act distributions, which right. I have taken advantage of myself. Um, so just as a kind of a recap, you know, that's allowing people to withdraw up to $100,000 from their retirement accounts. You don't have to pay the 10% penalty and you can defer taxes on those investments uh, over three years, as opposed to paying um, taxes, the whole uh, lump sum next year. So a very powerful thing to do um, just to kind of get the ball rolling. And it was a very, you know, it was, it was really tough. I'm not going to lie. When, you know, I stopped contributing to my 401k a couple of years ago, you know, when I took out that first, you know, lump sum of cash um, from my retirement assets, you know, I, was, I said, oh my gosh, am I, am I doing the right thing? Is this a huge mistake? I'll tell you what, it all disappeared as soon as I got that first um, rental check um, mm. kind of hitting my account. I said, wow, you know, this is real. And yeah. you know, a lot of um, a lot of people say real estate is risky. <laughs> um, you know, I've done a lot of work um, getting myself up to speed and kind of becoming, you know, an expert um, in the real estate space, at least in terms of the uh, single family home, the multifamily home. You know, right. there are you don't have to you don't have to go out driving through your neighborhood right away and finding you know some yeah. duplex that you need to spend a bunch of money renovating trying to find tenants yourself, you know, there are easier ways to go about investing in real estate. I know we've talked extensively about getting started with turnkey properties, which I think is a great first step for people. Yeah. Um, basically, you know, you have these companies that really go into neighborhoods that they're experts in. They purchase um, properties that you buy. And all you have to do is really kind of send in your down payment check you talk to a property manager and you really just kind of collect that cash flow every month. And I yeah. think conservatively right now, kind of given where, where rates are, I mean, this is the best time to invest in real estate. Rates are so low, probably the lowest we'll ever see in our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can get 10, 12, 14%, I think, um, a cash on cash return and a very conservative investment. Yeah, I totally agree. And that doesn't even sound conservative to most people. They hear those numbers. That's high risk creates high returns, right? Right. And that's, <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. It's kind of flipping on its head. And I mean, the way, you know, different people have different ways. They think about how they want to invest their money. For me personally, my wife and I, you know, we came to the agreement that we wanted to cover our fixed expenses mm -hmm. with, you know, passive cash flow. So passive cash flow is you don't really have to do too much in order to get your money every month. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, once we have our fixed expenses covered, maybe we can take some more risks and look at some more active cash flow measures, really try to kind of follow our passions, do something where you can maybe make a little bit more return. But I think just, you know, just the freedom that being able to cover your fixed expenses through passive cash flow, it provides you with just such certainty in life that you can really, you know, if you love your job, that's great. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe you get a new boss that comes in, maybe they want you to move to another city. You know, it really gives you kind of the power to control your life in the way you want. And mm -hmm. just, you know, educating people that you don't have to be a slave to the corporate world. You don't have to be a slave to a financial advisor or to these mutual funds, you know, is, is very empowering. And I think, um, you know, if people can just start learning that way of thinking, it can really, you know, change someone's life. Yeah, I agree. So from your experience, you just left the corporate world, right? Like you're now out of that. You've, the shackles have been released from wall street, you know, and, and you're yeah, free to invest how you want, you know, for those that are also in the corporate world right now, they're trying to do what you're doing, right? They're trying to get to that step where they're able to free themselves from that. What are some recommendations you would give? I would say the best thing to do is just to start small mm. and don't take any drastic moves right now. I would yeah. say, number one, the thing that every investor has to do, and this is no matter kind of what type of investor you are, if you like stocks, if you like bonds, if you like real estate, mm -hmm. you have to get your personal financial statements in order. That's number one. It's really important to be organized. So what that means is, you have to come up with your own personal balance sheet, come up with a list of what all your assets are and what all your liabilities are. I remember when my wife and I did this for the first time, she was actually shocked at how many assets we had accumulated because um, we never had really looked them looked at them all together on paper between our um, 
kind of our 401k accounts, between our primary residence, between some other money we had. Mm -hmm. you know, she said, wow, I didn't realize we had so much, but it doesn't seem like it because none of our assets were producing any cash flow for us, which I think right. is a problem you know, that so many people have. Um, so first, getting a sense of, you know, what are your assets? What are your liabilities? What are some high, you know, if you've got some high interest credit card debt, how do you pay that off quickly? And then um, you also want to get a sense of what your income and expenses are. So in the business world, we call that a profit and loss statement. Mm -hmm. um, on a personal side, I would say, you know, list out what your income is, list out what your expenses are, and then that'll give you a really good sense of areas you can cut back on. Yeah. And it'll give you a good sense of how much money you have every month um, to start, you know, your investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say once you kind of get a better understanding of how your, you know, fi your financial statements are set up, then you say, okay, what are my goals? What do I want to accomplish? Do you want to, you know, get out of the, the rat race in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years, you know? Do you want to help your kids pay for college? You know, you have to really think about what those financial milestones are. Yeah. And then it's much easier to design a plan in order to produce cash flow to reach those goals. So maybe you could say, you know, if I get, can get 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, that would really help me solve my financial goals, my financial problems. Then you and I can come in and say, okay, this is what you need to do. This is how long, um, you know, we think it's going to take. And that gives you a sense of um, kind of how to structure your working life. How aggressive do you need to be mm -hmm. to save? Um, are there any sacrifices you need to make? You know, right now, my wife and I are debating, do we still need two cars? Sure. You know, now that we're both uh, kind of working from home, you know, that could be a huge expense that somebody could get rid of that maybe seem could be jarring at first, but, you know, you know, maybe once it's gone, it's like, oh, we we don't, we don't, don't need two cars anymore. Um, so just kind of getting a sense of what your goals are, how your assets can produce cash flow for you, I think is kind of just the best way to really get started. Amen to that. That's great. I love it, man. So last question for you, Craig, right? Yeah. Why? Like why do you care so much about teaching and doing this? I mean, cause you could just keep focusing on your portfolio and doing your thing yeah. just like I could do. Right. Why sure. are you doing this? Why are you wanting to teach people this stuff? You know, such a good, uh, such a good question, Chris. You know, the 2020 has been such a rough year in so many different ways for a lot of people, uh, myself included. And, you know, my wife and I, you know, kind of midway through the summer when COVID was really kind of, when it, when we realized it was going to be more of a long-term reality than, you know, than a short-term reality, we said, you know, what do we really want our life to look like? We never really yeah. sat down and kind of had that conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty miserable um, in my current job. Um, and, you know, I said, I really, you know, what is it I really want to do? What really kind of lights my internal fire? And I told my wife, I said, I really want to help people that are really struggling and are really frustrated with their financial situation. I mm -hmm. want to help them, you know, take control of their life, you know, help them build the steps to financial freedom. That really gives me a lot of fulfillment. Um, and I think that's kind of, you know, the light bulb moment I had when I said, you know, this is important. This is kind of what my mission is. This is the problem that I want to help people solve for. Yeah. How am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of, you know, what led me to, you know, conversations with you going through your financial training course. And, you know, that's just, that's kind of what gets me out of bed every day. That's kind of, you know, that connection with clients trying to help them, you know, just, plan their financial future um, in the anti-financial advisor way is, you know, really kind of what my passion is and something I'm really looking forward to, uh, to exploring. I love it, man. Well, Craig, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm excited to have you as part of the team. Like, and yeah, this is great, Chris. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun ride. That's for sure. And so, uh, and I know everybody else too, and I know a lot of people can relate to where you're coming from and where you've been and where you're, well, they hope to relate to where you now are. So um, definitely excited to have you a part of the team, man. And, and everybody else, like if you're saying, hey, I think I need to do that same thing. Like I feel discontent, just like Craig was saying, like I'm not feeling like, you know, I'm feeling frustrated with my financial situation. I feel like I should be better off than I am right now. Or I feel like there's pipe potential here. We don't know how to tap into it or what to do with this the money we have. You know, shoot us an email, go to moneyripples.com, send us a contact email and just say, hey, what do we do? Like, you know, is this something that's a good fit? Because you know, whether it's me or Craig or it doesn't matter, like the truth is we are here to serve you. 
Um, we, we've definitely been here to serve ourselves plenty. Um, now it's time for us to give back and that's what we're here to do guys. So, you know, reach out to us, shoot us, you know, shoot us an email through that, through the webpage there and Hey, let's see if we can serve you. Uh, anyways, Craig, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been such a valuable amount of information experience that you have here. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Chris. I appreciate it. You bet. Everybody else, I hope you make it a wonderful and prosperous week, week that leads to a prosperous life that you don't just stop by listening, but you become a doer as well. Everybody, you make it a great day. We'll see you later.